Okay guys, I'm here at a kitchen that I remodeled about six years ago. And you can see uh, my handiwork there, backsplash, we put in a granite countertop. Um, I re-sanded the floors. Um, that was an existing cabinet. We put in another cabinet right beside it. Um, new appliances, top, side splash, range hood. Anyway, it was just, it wasn't a total gut, but it was a considerable remodel job. But um, the reason I'm over here is because She's got, she's uh, chipped her granite countertop. You can kind of see that. It's a, it's a pretty good chip. And then over here, <clears throat> uh, there's a small, there's a small little chip right there. You can just barely see it. And then right over here, um, there's three or four right in a row. I think I'm gonna have to fill one, then I can buff the rest out. And the rest of the edge feels nice and smooth. So uh, I'm going to show you how to do a uh, chip repair on granite. Okay guys, the first step you want to do is uh, get you some acetone. Put a little bit on a rag, on a rag and clean out the uh, chip and the surrounding area. And the reason you use acetone is because uh, it flashes off, it dries really quick. Do not use paint thinner or anything that's slow drying or anything that's gonna leave a residue. So I suggest acetone. You could use lacquer thinner if you wanted, but those would actually, those would be the only two I would use is lacquer thinner or acetone. You can buy these uh, these uh, kits anywhere at your granite supply house. You can get them in small kits, large kits. Uh, you can just get the individual tents. Uh, my kit was small. My first kit was smaller than this, and I'd used it up, so I bought a larger kit. And um, so basically, we're going to mix part A and B together right here, and then we'll tint it to match the base coat of the granite top and that's what we'll do first and then we'll mix up some uh, a couple of little uh, batches of darker uh, filler and we'll just dot in there to try to uh, make it look like the granite okay guys I've mixed I've uh, put equal amounts of part A and part B here and I'm going to mix this up Now we're going to uh, color it up to match the lighter color in here. So that's kind of a uh, deep brown. So we'll add just a little bit of brown to it. It won't take much. And a tiny bit of uh, black. And we'll see what that looks like. Just come over here to your patch and I can already tell that I need to be darker. All right, I've added a little bit of black to it. And so we have a deep brown. It might, it looks like it's a, just a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna add some brown to it. And this is just a little game you gotta kinda play here. which and you keep bringing your your material over and actually that looks really good it's hard for you to tell what I'm gonna this side is not mixed up as much and that's more brown and this is a really dark brown so I'm gonna separate these two out because I'm gonna use, I'm gonna put the lighter brown in first and then use the darker brown for highlights. 
So, um, as opposed to just putting one color in that chip, we're gonna we're gonna try to put at least two colors, maybe three. So, I'm gonna separate these out. These that color and that color. There's two colors there. I know you can't see it on the camera. Okay guys, I'm gonna to have to add some accelerator to get this where it's a, it's, it's kind of a hardener to speed up the drying process. So I'm gonna add some of that. And it won't take very much. I'm gonna put the lighter color in first. I want to make sure it's worked in really good. And you don't want to you don't want to fill it way out here so that causes more work for you. So keep it concentrated. And I'm going to take this same color and I'm going to go over here and and fill in the uh, other spots. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my highlight color, which is darker, and like I said, it's really hard to see on camera. And I'm just going to take a little bit like this and I'm going to highlight this by putting a few dots on it. Let me get a flashlight here and see if we can. Can you see where that's not all the same color? We've got a dark brown and a little lighter brown, and then we've got some darker black dots in there. It's probably. 30 minutes from being completely hard where we can start working it, but it's still soft enough that I could take down some high spots with a razor blade and that'll keep me from uh, a lot of hand work later on, sanding and so forth. So I'm going to slice some of this off. And just work your razor blade back and forth like a, a saw motion and you don't want to take too much of a bite. Whoops. So, um, there we go. That looks pretty good. I've left a little bit, uh, standing proud so I can, uh, sand that down later but it, the color is looking really good so um, the others let's see Show that. the others which is right here on the on the edge of the kitchen sink I can take and slice off get some of that off there but with some uh, thousand grit wet dry paper I can take that right off no no problem
but it's just a, a perfect time for using a razor blade on it. You just don't want to uh, get real aggressive with it because it could come out of there. Then it's not a problem, but we just have to mix up our filler again. So you see how I've got most of that off there. So what we'll do now is let that cure up real hard and then we'll work it again. Okay guys, the uh, filler material is dry on the chip. Let's see if we can, can't get it to focus here. So uh, I've got it, as you remember, I, I shaved off quite a bit of it and it's just setting proud a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is uh, get some uh, wet dry paper and start sanding that down and uh, forming that. And I'm gonna start out with some 600 grit. Okay, I'm using this uh, firm rubber squeegee as a backer for my sandpaper. And uh, so we'll give that a shot. What you don't want to do is just put your finger down here and sand. We want to use something a little harder and flatter so we can get that nice and flat. Okay. You want to take your wet dry paper and of course have it wet, but what you don't want to do or keep from doing is using your thumb or a finger to sand. You want to put something, uh, have a backer to it. And I've got a 3M uh, auto body squeegee, but this works really good for a, uh, a backer for the paper. So I'm gonna put the paper on it and I'm gonna use just this corner here to start sanding. You don't want to sand way out like this because that's just much, that much more work to uh, polish that later. So I want to concentrate right in here. So we'll give it a shot. So you just want to keep working it slowly until you bring it down to the surface of the top. I got work this front uh, eased edge here try to get the profile put back on it as you can see I've curled the uh, sandpaper and backer so I can concentrate right in here okay I've worked that down with uh, 600 grit paper and I can't even feel it. So there's no raised area and there's no dip in it. So now we're going to start uh, hitting it with some finer grit paper. <clears throat> so I have 600 on here now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit it a little bit with some 1000 grit and just work my way to finer grits. <clears throat> And if you want to see what it looks like before you even uh, start polishing it, you can wet the whole area. See how it's gone there? So once we polish it, that's what it's going to look like. So that'll give you an idea. Okay, here's some 2000 grit, wet dry. Looking pretty good. So, uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start buffing that. Okay guys, I'm going to use this uh, 
machine glaze by uh, Meguiar's and I've got a four and a half inch grinder here with about a about a nine inch uh, double sided buffing wheel I'm actually gonna put uh, about five or six dots around on the pad and then I'll set it here and just kind of hand turn the pad so it don't sling around get that worked in Well, it's just about gone. I'll give it another little more buff and we'll be about done. So again, I put on uh, four little dots of compound. Work it around. And there you go. Now all I'm going to do is repeat the same process on my other chips. And let's see right here it is. You see how that is, uh, that repair has got some browns and and black in it <clears throat> and it just it matches perfectly with the uh, color of the existing top so now everybody knows how to repair it's right there repair their uh, chips and their granite or marble tops and uh, I'll show you here the, the uh, kit that I got. You can find them online. Um, natural stone repair kit. Uh, that's bond stone materials. Um, it's got some instructions here. But like I said last time I got a kit, it was probably half this size. <clears throat> I don't think it was this brand and it lasted me for years and so this is going to last me for a long time also and also make me a lot of money so uh... you could you could easily charge a hundred to a hundred and fifty bucks just for a, a chip like that and this house has got several although these are smaller these won't be that much but um uh, Anyway, it's it's not bad. You could get you a, oh a, a buffing pad and a and a grinder, some polishing compound, some wet dry sandpaper, and uh, and a little kit, and practice on some friends countertops or your home countertops, and then uh, run your little ad. You could probably drum up quite a bit of business. This top's only been in here about six years, and uh, I've already repaired probably three other chips over the years. And uh, so there you go. 
Now I'm going to repair this edge here the same way. And I'm probably going to have about 30 more minutes in it. So uh, actual work time on this, this one right here was probably uh, an hour. And not including uh, dry time, but uh, at least at this job, I've had other things to do, like fix this uh, trash drawer and and a cabinet uh, door and things like that while this was was setting up. So uh, anyway, hope you uh, learned something. Talk to you later.